Hello guys and welcome back to another video tutorial from my YouTube channel that is Biology at your fingertips and today we will be learning the mechanism of the concentration of filtrate. So today we are going to learn the mechanism of concentration of filtrate. So before that we have to understand some basic concepts about this thing. So the mammals, all the mammals have a capability or a tendency to concentrate their filtrate to make their filtrate more concentrated by the process of dehydration that is the removal of water because when we are removing some amount of water from a particular thing the concentration of that particular thing goes on increasing so the concentration of particular filtrate depend on two things the first one is the length of loop of Henle and the vasa recta and this particular mechanism of the concentration of filtrate is known as counter current mechanism counter current mechanism and why it is known as counter current mechanism because the blood that is flowing in vasa recta there are two limbs of vasa recta that is the descending limb in which the blood is flowing downwards and one is the ascending limb in which it is flowing upwards so the direction of the blood flowing in both the limbs of vasa recta is in opposite direction that means it is maintaining the counter current as well as in nephron or in the loop of Henle, the ascending limb as well as the descending limb has different directions of the movement of a particular filtrate therefore this is also maintaining the counter current that is the flow of a particular substance in opposite directions in both limbs so this is known as counter current mechanism after that this particular diagram would be divided into three regions the outermost region is the cortex the middle region is the outer medulla cortex is always towards the periphery and medulla towards the center so medulla the inner part of medulla will be more towards the center and the outer part of medulla will be towards the periphery and the cortex will be on the periphery itself so after that the efferent arteriole efferent means it is carrying the substrate to the glomerulus which is a bunch of you know blood vessels after that the efferent arteriole would be carrying a particular substance away from the glomerulus the glomerulus is a round structure globule like structure which is surrounded by a capsule that is known as Bowman's capsule which in fact is you know attached to nephron or the Henle's loop Henle's loop that Henle loop is attached to a collecting tube or connecting tubule so this particular counter current mechanism maintains a particular osmolarity particular kind of osmolarity in different regions of this particular diagram for example the osmolarity in cortex region would be approximately 300 milliohms mole per liter you have to concentrate on this particular unit milliohms mole per liter that is milliohms mole liter inverse in the outer medullary region the osmolarity would be about or the concentration would be about 600 milliohms mole per liter in inner medullary region it would be 900 and in the lower most region nearly towards the center of this particular diagram it will make a round circle it will be 1200 milli ohms mole per liter so the counter current is flowing in two parts that is the loop of Henle and the vasa recta which are maintaining different concentrations in this particular diagram and the gradient this particular concentration gradient is due to two particular substances one is NaCl that is the common salt and the another one is urea which is the most important excretory filtrate of our body so what is the mechanism of this particular thing some NaCl molecules come into the interstitium this particular thing is known as the interstitium between the two limbs of a particular system so the NaCl molecules from the ascending limb of loop of Henle comes to the interstitium and exchange these particular NaCl molecules with the descending limb of vasa recta ascending limb of the loop of Henle changes some NaCl molecules to the descending limb of vasa recta which in turns 
कम बैक टू द इंटरस्टिशियम वाया द असेंडिंग लिम्ब ऑफ वासा रेक्टा सो फ्रॉम द असेंडिंग लिम्ब ऑफ लूप ऑफ हेनले टू द डिसेंडिंग लिम्ब ऑफ वासा रेक्टा एंड फ्रॉम असेंडिंग लिम्ब ऑफ वासा रेक्टा टू द इंटरस्टिशियम सो द एनएसएल कंसंट्रेशन इन द इंटरस्टिशियम इंक्रीजेस आफ्टर दैट इट विल टॉक अबाउट द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ यूरिया इन द थिन रीजन in the thin region of ascending loop of henle some urea molecules are absorbed which in turn passes to the collecting tubule because the interstitial limb of the loop of henle connects to the collecting tubule and that particular place collecting tubule send those urea molecules again to the interstitium that's very important that the any molecules which are getting absorbed which are sent it to descending loop of vasa recta are absorbed in interstitium and the thin region of ascending loop of uh, ascending limb of loop of henle also gives that particular urea molecules to the collecting tubule which send those urea molecules to the interstitium so this is the particular mechanism of sending nacl as well as urea in this particular process the h2o molecules comes out of the collecting tubule which is our main motto that is the concentration of filtrate as the water molecules are coming out of the collecting tubule and leaving the particular filtrate molecule it means that the concentration of that particular molecule is increasing so mammals has an ability to concentrate its filtrate up to Four times that is the initial concentration of a particular filtrate is approximately 1200 milli os mol per liter. But after the concentration of that particular filtrate, it can be up to 300 milli os mol per liter. And as we know that in these particular limbs, the concentration goes like this: 300, 600, 900. So the remaining values will be 400 somewhere like that: 500, 600 here, 700, 800, 900, and so on. And from this limb, it goes on decreasing: twelve hundred, eleven hundred, thousand, nine hundred, up to three hundred. So this is all about the mechanism of concentration of filtrate via the counter current mechanism, which is very important from examination point of view. So I hope that this particular lecture is going to help you in your examinations. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. If you really like this video, then hit like button. And if you are new, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much again for watching this video.